Hello and welcome to Maker.io. In this episode, we're going to learn about how to use the GPIO library, part two. In the previous episode, we learned a bit about the GPIO library that you can use in C++ on the Pi, which was wiring Pi. And one of the reasons why I like this library is that it's written in a very similar way to the Arduino library for uh, Arduinos. So in this article, we're gonna be learning about three additional features in the GPIO library, which are interrupts, timing, and, PDO and PWM signals. Interrupts are really useful when you need your code to respond to something as soon as something occurs, such as a pin change on a GPIO pin. And the interrupts that you can actually set for the GPIO pins are upon a transition to a high signal, upon a transition to a low signal, and upon a transition to any signal. So whether it goes high or low or low or high, doesn't really matter. The timing functions are very useful and can be used to time events or just general programming time. When you call one of the timing functions, it will tell you the current time since it last was called, and then you can call it again and then compare the two results. So you can use that to determine how long something took to occur. And the last one is the PWM, which is very, very useful, but the Raspberry Pi does only have one PWM output as a, as a hardware output. PWM signals can be used to control power to devices such as motors, fans, and other high power devices, which is why they're very, very useful in those applications. One of the major downsides to the PWM signal on the Raspberry Pi is that you cannot configure the frequency. You can only adjust the duty cycle. Well, that's all we have time for today in this episode. Thank you for watching and see you next time.